Yo guys, welcome to Renderam, my name is Vieku and today we're going to be covering 5 super fast interior tips. I'm not talking about major stuff like setting up the light or something like that. I'm talking about that extra kick to your render. Things that will take zero amount of your time, but they will make a great impact on your render. So for our first tip, I want to focus on this picture here and this mirror here. Whenever you look at mirrors or pictures in real life or even TVs, you will always notice that the reflection in them is a little bit bendy. It's, it's not always perfect. You never see that perfect reflection. So in general, here you can see in this picture, we have these two reflections from the windows outside. We can also see the reflection of the mirror here is just a straight line. But what you can do so this is my glass for the for the picture. I just have a super weak noise. So by weak, I mean size 800. So I'll just plug this into my bump and you can see that subtle deformation that is happening. It doesn't look wrong because you see that you're looking at that every day everywhere. The same thing goes for the mirror, although mirrors are a little bit more sensitive. So be careful with those bumps. But yeah, if I just plug in my bump here, you're going to see that these reflections are a tiny little bit curvy. Imagine this, in 3D, everything is absolutely 90 degrees perfect. If you break those details by like half of a degree with, with everything, you're just tricking a viewer's brain that he's looking at something realistic because that is how things are in real life. So another example is this TV, for example. So if you just go to the material of the TV glass and you just plug in your bump in it and just break it a little bit. Look at this, just a tiny, tiny break. This will just break that 3D perfection and it's gonna just give your render, like I said, an extra kick. Our next little trick is a random rotation of absolutely everything that is movable. So what do I mean by that? So in this little interior that I have here, I have these two chairs. Whenever you place a chair, you just drop it in 90 degrees towards the table, just instance it and you're done. But if you just invest this amount of time, look at this, just go to the rotation and just randomly rotate it like this, just to break that perfection and try to eyeball the location where the chair needs to sit. Go the same with this one and just eyeball where you think it sits forward. If you want to push this extra mile, you can even push this one back a little bit. Now, did this make a difference? Yes, because it broke the perfection of the 3D. But what is the actual difference? So when I click on this chair, you can see when I go to the rotation, there is a rotation of 0.67. When I click on this one, it's 1.1. And those are those tiny subtle details. On the other hand, if I go back to, to, to my lovely interior here, any picture on the wall or any mirror on the wall has some sort of nail in the wall. And because of that, no picture, I mean, theoretically, yes, but in general, what we're used to look at, no. But no picture in the world sits perfectly with 90 degrees on the wall. They always have a little bit of tilt, just a tiny little bit. So this is what you do. When you place a picture, just go here and just rotate that picture a tiny little bit. Do the same thing with the mirror, just a subtle, subtle, subtle rotation. And this is the effect that you're gonna get. If you see with this picture, you're gonna notice that this shadow is just not perfectly vertical it kind of has you, you, you can feel that angle where here the shadow is a little bit smaller here it's a little bit longer you can even feel the little gap here and that's that extra rotation that's just gonna again break the whole 3d the next thing that i like to do in my renders i like to lift stuff so whatever things i can lift a little bit i will lift it because i will generate a tiny contact shadow when you perfectly snap something onto the ground, you don't have a contact shadow. But if you lift something up but by one or two millimeters, you're going to get a lot of contact shadows. So, for example, here on the beams, you don't see any contact shadowing. Here on the skirting board, you don't see any contact shadowing. But take a look at the difference if I actually make this little change. So, for my beams, I'm just going to lower them down a little bit, just below the ceiling, a little tiny bit. For my skirting board, I'm just going to select it and just move it up. So this is the difference. So the purple line is my floor, and this is the difference that I did. And this is the result that we have. Now you can clearly see that light black contact shadow here. You can feel it here. You can even feel it here on the beams much more. So you just need to kind of adjust that. But yeah, the more things you kind of lift, you're creating that black line. And that black line is creating more details in your image. If you have, for example, two books, one book on top of another book, lift the top book a little bit up 
and you're gonna get that extra contact shadow and that's just gonna bring extra details to your render and this is what you want. Now, another thing that I see whenever I get someone else's interior, when it comes to creating walls, everyone knows how to create walls and they usually look something like this. This is your interior and then you have a wall and then you can't see inside. So you're gonna go to object properties, display as a box and now you can see inside, etc. and you're gonna work like that. Here's a different approach for that. So what I like to do is, well, basically this. So all my walls are single sided. There is no thickness to the walls. And, and from every angle, you can constantly see inside. So this is one giant object where everything is just connected. Now, why would I go through all that struggle to just have one piece that is, you know, nicely viewable? Well, A, I can clearly see everything, but B is this. So what I like to do when you have a scenario like that, I like to add chamfer to this. And I add a chamfer of five millimeters with segments two. And of course I have my inset with flow loop on 0.25 and you're gonna get this. All your corners are gonna get this chamfered element. Now, is that visible in the render? Of course it is. So you can even see it here. Look, you have a that faint white line on the corners. Look at now when I zoom in. This line, this is that effect I'm talking about. You're getting this. And this is just that extra kick that's gonna just make your renders look believable. This is a photo of my actual room where I'm recording right now. And yeah, you can actually see those, those lines. Look at them. All of them are nicely pronounced. And when I go back to my render, I can also see that same effect happening. And our last thing that I like to put in all of my renders, this is the, the, the physics that do not usually exist in CGI. And that's power outlets or light switches or anything like that. This is a super old render that I did, but I added a power switch here, power switch here, electricity outlet here. Look, here even in the reflection there is a power switch next to this next to this door. Then this image. Look, electricity outlet, light switch here. These details, you, you can make a preset of these. Like every room has them and it's actually super unnatural to not see them. So yeah, just create like a preset object and you can just you know, just copy paste it, just pick it onto the walls everywhere. Trust me, it's a tiny detail, but it will make a hell of a difference because I believe that 90% of the renders, interior renders out there don't have electricity outlets and light switches. And that's it for the... Have you heard the news? Max 2024 got released. You know where I got that from? Evermotion website. Look at this, Max 2024. And it has a new boolean modifier, it has a material switcher, it has a new material editor, it has all these new new kind of things. Head over to Evermotion News and you're gonna see a lot of cool things here. And uh, hold up, my, my, my mouse is broken? What is it doing? Hold up, shop? shop? I, I don't wanna go to shop. Oh snap, look at all these these nice arc interiors and model. Don't don't click it. 25 25% off. Oh my god. Uh, no. Oh 89 euro. Okay, at the see you in Okay, guys. See see you guys in the next video. I have some payments to do. Check out now. Bye.